Hello, and welcome to the Happy Valley High School Art YouTube channel. You are watching a one-point perspective bird's eye view. For this drawing, you are required to have at least three intersections with, uh, for streets. You will need eight buildings with at least five of those buildings having something on their roof and windows slash doors. On your streets, you will need at least five cars. For your city scene or your bird's eye view scene, I'm sorry, you'll need at least two parking lots and at least one park. Again, these requirements are linked in the description box. So here is a image of kind of what we are going to be creating today. So as you can see, an intersection is where streets are going to cross, so you'll need at least three of these type things on your streets. You will need at least eight buildings. I have more than that. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. On this picture alone, um, what I meant by rooftop is you'll have to have something on tops of, of at least five of the buildings. You will need at least two parking lots and at least a park. Now this drawing is very rough draft. Uh, your drawings will put a little bit more details into it. If I spent all that time working on this video, we would be here forever. So your drawings should be a lot more involved than this. This is just getting you started. So first thing we're gonna do for a bird's eye view is put our vanishing point. Now because we are at a bird's eye view, we do not have a horizon line. Make sure your pencil is super sharp before you begin. It makes working with perspective a lot easier. So I'm just going to place my dot, and you really don't need a ruler for this, but I'm trying to kind of figure out where the middle part of mine is. And you can place your dot directly in the center or on the left, right, wherever you would like uh, that vanishing point to be. For my drawing, I'm gonna place it kind of in the center. For the drawing I showed you as an example, the dot was more to, or the vanishing point was more to the right. The easiest way to start this out is just to build your streets. Remember, you're only gonna have to have at least three intersections. So depending on where your bird is looking from uh, will depend on how large your streets are. If your bird is closer to these buildings, you're gonna have much larger streets uh, if your bird is really up there in the air, almost like a, a airplane, then your streets will be really small, your buildings will be really small. Um, so I'm just gonna start drawing some random lines to create some streets. Use your ruler. Try to keep these spaces evenly separated, the, the hollow spaces in between. We wanna kinda keep those even. So on this one, I'm gonna have them be a little bit larger, be easier to work with. Just randomly, remember you only have to have a minimum of three intersections. When you're working with perspective, it's always easiest if you're drawing lighter, not putting a lot of pressure because we do a lot of erasing when working with perspective. When I also work with a ruler, I try to make sure I look at the, the ruler's position before I make a mark. Sometimes we just like to place the ruler down and not really paying attention to what we're doing and it can cause us a lot of problems, making sure those lines are straight. Although the edge of the ruler is straight doesn't necessarily mean our line is going to look straight. So always look before you start making so as you can see, the thickness of my roads are pretty close in size and I'd like you to try to keep it that way. So right now I have one intersection, I have a second. All I need is a minimum of three 
but I'm going to go a little bit further. Look at my lines. And I'm going to go back through and erase this part because I want them to actually connect. If the way I have it right now, it says if this road is underneath and this is a bridge. So if that's something you want, that's fine. You can have that kind of thing. Just note that that is not considered an intersection. Remember that these drawings don't have to be perfect. They are practice. I'm expecting there to be mistakes. Ms. Sesses did not always start off drawing this correctly. I have made several mistakes working on my artworks. It's all about learning. You don't learn from doing things correctly. Okay, so I've got about one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I've got this one, seven intersections. So I feel pretty confident in this drawing. So now I'm going to start with my buildings. Now you have the option to adding in, or we want, I want you to actually add these in. This is on option, uh, add in your dotted lines. So let's, let me show you how to do that exactly. So I'm going to place that ruler and I'm going to try to, to to break this space up about halfway, place my ruler there, and all I'm going to do is pick up my pencil and make a little dashed line across my ruler. We don't want large dashes because this is further away, so these are going to be tiny little dashes. It's fairly even and I'd like you to do this for all of your streets just line that row up breaking up the space in between and just every pick your pencil up draw a little dash and use the edge of the ruler to draw these little dashes Try to make sure your ruler is nice and straight. You don't want, so that one wasn't the best, but <laughs> you don't want um, gigantic dashes. I don't want to see things like that, okay? I don't want to see that kind of stuff on this drawing. Let me get this back in. Don't want to see this. So you will do this on all of your streets. Now you can have, if you want to, have solid lines. My goodness. Okay. Almost there.
So you did not need the vanishing point to do your streets, but you will definitely need it for this next part. So we're gonna put the buildings in our drawing. Now you need to have at least eight of those buildings, I'm sorry, you have to have at least eight buildings with five of them having something on their rooftop and windows and doors. So what you're gonna do is build your buildings or draw your buildings into these spaces. All they are is squares uh, and rectangles. Now if you want to try, you can make oddly shaped buildings, um, but for the majority of you, I would just stick to the basic square rectangle shapes, especially when we're starting out learning how to use perspective. So you're going to want to put those buildings in these spaces. Um, all you got to do, and you can use a ruler if you feel more comfortable doing that, if you don't feel like you can just draw a square. Um, Ms. Sessis doesn't need a ruler for this part, um, but you definitely use a ruler if you feel more comfortable uh, making your, your shapes, your squares. So I'm just going to draw out the tops of my buildings. So here's one. And I like to challenge myself a little bit. Make them different, don't have all the same shape. All these are, are just squares and rectangles. Notice when I'm sketching, I'm just not always making a solid line, I'm making lots of little dashes working together. Some of your buildings can go off the page, so we can't see the back side of that building. yourself a little bit of fun have some fun with it make these different shapes other than just sticking with you know a simple square on all of your buildings add a little bit of character to some of them so this is the part we're going to be using that vanishing point you have to use the vanishing point in order to get this to look correct you have to have to have to all you are doing is where these corners are, you're going to line those corners up to that vanishing point. So we'll start off with this one closest to it. So I'm going to line up this corner with that vanishing point. These are going to look a little funny, especially when they get really close to the, the vanishing point. The option you have is if you really want them to look like you're super far away, you can go all the way to that vanishing point. Okay. If you really want them to look like they're super far away, you can go towards it or go all the way. I'm just going to go towards it, so ever so slightly, because my streets are much larger. We can see a lot more details in our streets, so that doesn't mean that I'm super far away from them. So again, your streets, if your streets are really thin, super tiny streets, um, you know, go closer to that vanishing point. So I'm going towards it, not all the way, and I'm going to try to meet it around the same length over on the other corner. So here's this corner going towards it. Now, 
if you line this up to that vanishing point and that line is going to go through your building or through your square, your rectangle, then that means you don't draw it. So because this one lines up with this and it's going to go through the, in part, the inner part of my shape, I will not draw it. With this one, same thing is going to happen. So we really won't see that side of the building. We're only seeing it from this angle, from this side. So once I've done that, I'm going to uh, connect those two receding lines that we drew, connect them across. And the reason why I tell you to draw lightly is because sometimes you have to get rid of some extra stuff. So there's that extra receding line. I don't need that. So draw lightly. And there we go. There's my first building. So I'm going to be doing this for every single one. Just at the corner, line it up towards that vanishing point. And move this page down so you can maybe see it a little bit better. Make sure, take your time when you are lining these things up. If you just simply place the ruler on there without really looking or paying attention, you can have a lot of mess ups. So you want to keep it about the same distance, okay? So I'm going to work on this back one. And it's not going to go through my building, so therefore I draw it. I'm just drawing a little bit. Over here, I line this up with that vanishing point. It's going to go through my building. I won't draw it. Now we have another corner right here. It would go through my building. I don't draw it. Next one. It would go through my building. I don't draw it. Here. Just a sliver. And in this corner, it would go through my building. Now, what you need to do is you're going to run a parallel line parallel to the original. Okay? So you're going to connect these two, just like this one connects. So I line it up with the original bring it down to where those two are, and connect them. Here, line up my ruler with the original, slide it down, and connect them. This is where it might get tricky when we're trying these, these fancier shaped buildings. So this is a wall, but we don't see it from our perspective. But we do see this wall. All you are doing is running that same parallel line. You're just going to run it into that line. Okay, so we can see this part, but this part of our building we cannot see. I'll be doing that again on another shape. We'll do that over here. Again, corner to, to the vanishing points. Draw towards it. Doesn't mean draw all the way unless you've got those streets are really small. Draw towards it. Now, this is lined up perfectly with that. It, there's no point in drawing that one. We really don't see that angle. And nothing over here we would be able to see. This one, it's so small, the space here for mine. But I'm still going to draw it so it'll look correct. And it's actually just going to go into the top part of my building. So all I have to do is connect this down here, and that building is complete. I'm going to quickly do these. Look at the corners and line them up with the vanishing point. Draw towards it. Take your time when working with the ruler. Make sure everything's aligned before you start making your marks. Parallel with that one. Parallel with the one above it. I can't see this one. There's no point in drawing it. We'll work on this one. 
draw towards that vanishing point. This is a fairly easy drawing compared to all the others we will do in class. This is kind of a, a new thing I'm trying. Um, I find bird's eye view to be fun. Um, so I thought this would be something fun we could do. I've never done the bird's eye view with any class. This is, you guys are the first ones to get to do this. This won't go, this won't go. I just know it. And you'll kind of figure it out how it works. Now that kind of looks funny, but that's correct. So sometimes when we're drawing, working with perspective, it can look funny, but it's correct. Um, and we, we second guess a lot, you know, when we're working with perspective. Notice as I'm not drawing a line going super far towards that vanishing point because again I've already said this but my my, um, my my streets are much larger I can see more now look here I made this line connected it but this one's not long enough all I gotta do is realign this up and just extend that line up a little bit further and this is why I like you to work with rulers um, that are clear it makes it so much easier now here's one so my building goes off the page. So we cannot see the other side of this. So we just have to assume that the, let's say the building is right about here. You just kind of, you can like barely draw on the table if you need to. Uh, you can draw the rest of that. So I just kind of lightly drew on my table where that point would be. And I'm going to line that ruler up with the point that's going off of the page. And I'm just going to extend that line out. So to finish it off, you'll connect with that first one that you did down here. Connect it across. So I have a little bit of extra. I'll get rid of it. Okay. So to have those buildings come off the page. Remember, we are birds in the sky, looking down at our little town, our little city that we're making. Okay. Again, here's another one where I've got the building going off the page. So you can etch onto the table just ever so slightly if you need to, to kind of let you know where the end of your building would be. And then there's mine. I'm going to draw what I have. Oops. This one super thin. A little bit of extra stuff, I get rid of that. Okay, and I saved the course, the biggest building for last. <coughs> so connecting those corners towards that vanishing point. Go. Here's an interesting one. I'm just going to go into that building. All right, so none of these will be marked. Right, so what you want to do next is connect them, just like they did in the previous. Now, I can do this without needing a ruler, um, and 
that's easier for me to kind of show you. So what we'll do here, because we don't have a line here to connect, we will just connect it across. Keeping this line parallel with that one. This would go here. I want you to use a ruler unless you can draw like I just did. I want you to use a ruler. Okay, so now we've got our at least our eight buildings. Uh, five of them have to have something on the rooftop. I'm going to make this my hospital. So here's something I can put on. I can put a, a helicopter pad. Just kind of draw that on there. We'll make it a nice H. The helicopter's off somewhere. Saving lives. There's my helicopter pad. Or it could be maybe it's a, a studio. All right, so let's say I want to put an air conditioning. A lot of buildings are going to have air conditionings or they're going to have chimneys. And it's the same thing. You're just making a smaller square uh, on top. So all I'm going to do is draw. This could maybe maybe this is a for the helicopter whenever they come in. This is the door to get into the main part of the building. All you are doing is making a square, a rectangle, and you're doing the same thing, just on a smaller scale. You're connecting that towards that vanishing point. So connecting those parts towards the vanishing point. Um, we'll just catch a sliver of that part. Okay, connecting those down. So there's like a, a rooftop. It could be an air conditioning. It could be the door. If it is a door, we're using the vanishing point to create the door. You have to go towards that vanishing point. The door is going to be super small. And there's my door. Okay, so you're going to be creating at least five things on top of your buildings, or five buildings with things on top. So these two are on one building, so that's considered one, okay? So don't put five things on one building. You need to do this on other ones. Let's say over here, this is a little factory, okay? Um, like Eastman, okay? I'm going to make tiny little squares or rectangles. These are going to be like my chimneys. Okay. All you're doing again is going towards that vanishing point. And I can tell my, my pencil's starting to dull down and get less of a point. It's so much easier, especially when you're working with tiny little details. Make sure that you have a very sharp pencil. So take a break if you need to. Go sharpen your pencil. Um, so it'll be nice and perfect. I really like a mechanical pencil because it constantly can stay sharp. Um, doesn't mean you have to use one. Let me go back on this one. I just, if you can tell right now, see like right here my line didn't really line up. It was more my pencil's fault. Not that I'm blaming it on the pencil. I kind of am. I can go back and fix that. Using a nice sharp pencil. You know I'm going to get on you if your pencil is not sharpened. It can cause a lot of your frustrations. Now remember, we are above this image. We are birds in the sky right now. That's what our perspective, our point of view is. Okay, so all you're doing is closing that off. Just like you did the others. We're just making cubes. Mimicking that line, mimicking that line. Use your ruler if you need to. Then let's make a little smokestack. So this is kind of going above us. Remember, it's above us. Let's just make a little tiny smokestack. straight out of there. You can get real fancy with it and draw the inner parts if you want to, but we're not going to. This is just kind of a fun exercise. Okay. Again, 
just putting something on top of the building. Make this one really nice and long. Going towards that, maybe this is like a second rooftop or second part of the building. Stuff. Color that in, shade that in. I've had students ask how to do a arched roof, like a house. So you're kind of going from the corners. You'll have a straight edge. So that's the top, the very top pitch of your roof. And here it is. Again, it looks a little funny because we are on, it's from the bird's eye view. So this is the roof, this would be the side of that building. So you could have something like that if you wanted to. my square using the vanishing point use the vanishing point always always use that vanishing point nine times out of ten we're having perspective problems because we're not using our vanishing point so right now I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay? A minimum of five of those has to have something on the rooftop. All right. I also want a minimum of five buildings having windows or doors. Windows or doors. I'm going to switch over to a different pencil. So I've got a door here. We could consider that a door. We're just going to put little windows in, and it's the same thing. Your verticals for those windows will use the vanishing point. So you're just gonna, and these are gonna be super tiny little windows. So I'll put some windows on here. Just so make another one next to it and connect those down. That's all you're doing. You could almost just make these windows by making super thick boxes or lines. That's pretty much all you're doing. Go towards that vanishing point. Okay, you can color those in if you wanted to. Going towards the vanishing point. Okay, I don't want to see windows like this. And this is not what I want to see. That's not using the vanishing point. And I can tell if you're not using that vanishing point. So what I meant by thickening those lines is just give it that ruler. There's one, connect them across. All you need is a few windows, not a lot. This is just kind of, again, a practice. But I want to see some windows on there, okay? So at least five buildings to have. I've got one, two right now. I need to put some windows on some of my other buildings or doors, either one. Here, I'll do some doors. The same thing. So I'm going to start from the bottom of that building using the vanishing point. Go up, go up, connect across. There's my little door. Okay. really want to get fancy with it, you can put this kind of stuff on all of your buildings. It's not required though. This is just, again, practice, practice, practice. Now let's make this like a, one of those fancy high-rise corporate type offices. So the whole front of the building is just windows. 
all I'm doing is creating lines using that vanishing point. And you'll notice how it's kind of just rotating off of that point, okay? And if I want to make horizontals, I just, I don't use the vanishing point, I just place this on here. So we can see the whole front of this building is nothing but windows. Okay. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. There you go. Okay. You need to have at least five cars on the road. It doesn't have, this is an aerial view. We're looking above, um, we're looking above, so the cars aren't going to, to necessarily look, and they're, they're, they're super small, okay? We don't want a gigantic car unless it's like a, a, a 18 wheeler or something like that. But all you have to do is simply just give me a, a little shape of a car. So if we're on streets like this that are vertically placed from our viewpoints, all you're doing if you're drawing a little car is just give me something on the road. There we go, I'll do a little pickup truck or something. Okay, it's just a box with a little square. There's one, if you're going to draw one that's going this way, horizontally from our viewpoint, we'll probably see a little bit more detail of the car, but we're only seeing the sides of the car, give it some wheels, okay? Again, it doesn't have to be some kind of a perfect drawing. Just give me a little car. I just want to see that you understand how it works. cars don't necessarily have to be on the road. Maybe they're in the parking lot. You can have crosswalks. You can have road signs. Or you really wouldn't see the road signs from here. You could do something like a um, traffic light. So if from a traffic light, you would just kind of thicken that line and go down. So if you wanted to have some traffic lights, uh, you could add that kind of thing. Thicken that line, just thicken the line, and then kind of show that it's going back down. Okay. Uh, if you want to hang the lights, you can. You'll need to use that vanishing point to kind of draw the lines for the traffic, traffic lights. You can do crosswalks. You can do sidewalks. If we wanted to put a little sidewalk here, we would do that. Um, Anything that is going flat like this, you can just do little crosswalks on there if you want to. All right. Next thing would be parking lots. So here's my hospital. Um, I'm going to draw some little parking spots against this. I'm just going to draw little vertical lines. Against this little tiny vertical lines. Here we're going to have a nice little parking spot. So in this space, you're going to use the vanishing point. Let me move this over. Okay, so if I'm going to make some little angled parking spots, all I'm doing is using that ruler, pivoting towards it to make my extra little parking spots. Going to make them go the opposite directions. I'm just going to angle them away. Should probably give a space so cars can actually get through. So I'll just kind of start it here. So we're doing just a simple, simple, simple little parking lot. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I want a minimum of two. Now you can give parking spots on all buildings if you wanted to. You would use the vanishing point on some of them. If 
if you want them to be kind of angled. Okay. A minimum of two. And lastly, we're going to add in a little park. You could do water, you could do trees. I'm going to put this as like our little park. So I'm actually going to just draw this random shape. This is going to be kind of like a, a lake. And I want to add trees to it. Uh, so I'll just draw some random little shapes. We're seeing the tops of the trees. Lots of trees. And all we're going to do for the bottoms of those trees is use that vanishing point. Kind of going towards it just ever so slightly. Towards that vanishing point. Not really and totally using it, just kind of towards it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You could draw a boat on there if you wanted to. Remember, though, we're seeing the top of the boat, so you're not going to draw a boat like this. Okay, that's going to make it very elementary. Um, so if you wanted to do a boat or something like that, you need to think about how you are looking at it from the top perspective. And essentially, this is all I'd like to see from you guys. Of course, a little bit more detail into it than I just did. This is an example, um, but I'd like you to, you know, add some things of your own, give it, make it your own, um, and, ha and have fun with it. So this is the bird's eye view. Remember the things that you'd like to have on this drawing are streets with at least three intersections. When I say streets, I would like to see the dotted lines on them buildings, at least eight buildings, with at least five of those buildings having something or stuff on the roof, windows, doors, etc. Cars, at least five cars on the roads, or they can be in the parking lots. You need to have a minimum of two parking lots and a minimum of one park. This is the one-point perspective bird's eye view.